born just not yesterday. Sharon Horn Elsham here. Welcome today. 1,356 of documenting the journey as I transition from the brick and mortar corporate world of business to the online world of business and back and forth. Today, I'm coming to you filterless because the filters that Facebook, since they've done their last uh, update, they're doing like an Instagram scroll where you can pick from a few filters. They're terrible. They're actually heinous. One is somebody looking down their pants. Another one is a guy who looks like he's hugging you but strangling you. Uh, there's some flaming fire ones. There's uh, some satanic looking ones. There are some like freaky zoid face head shape ones. Clearly disturbing uh, choices that are actually being served up to me. And I don't know if that different options are served up to different people, but I find the ones that are being served up to me truly offensive and so I am not using them I'm not using any of them today so well, I'll use some today but not on this video this one if this is me this is just me being me and that's part of what is important to me is just being myself and, and becoming a better version of me all the time and continually improving an aside so our idiom our expression today for supersize your business was not born yesterday it's an expression that's been around since the 1800s no clearly defined origin which is okay but it did lead me, as I was researching it, to a very interesting book by the same name, Not Born Yesterday, that I'm going to get my hands on by, I think it was Hugo Mercier or something. And I'm curious to read because he basically has the opposite, uh, he takes the opposite stance of what I think most people and are, are thinking with respect to people thinking for themselves and brainwashing and influence. And so I'm actually going to pick that up on Amazon today and read that maybe over the weekend or whenever it arrives next week just because I'm really curious about this different perspective and I wonder if it's just you know more whitewashing of what's really going on in the world because we start to get conspiracy theories and we start to believe that we can't believe what we see and hear because so much of it goes against our intuitive feeling of right and wrong and truth and untruth and that's what Not Born Yesterday is all about it's about that we're unlikely as we get older and have more experience and more experience with different people and different situations, we are less likely to fall for the lies, the untruths, the dishonest people. Our, our intuition, if it's been honed, but I think it's been dulled over decades, at least mine has, by people that have the ability to manipulate and mislead and and coerce and, and uh, lie to us. And so it's interesting. And I'm really curious to read that book and check it out. So I would like more hope, I guess. I have lots of hope in terms of I think people are much smarter than certain individuals give us credit for. But uh, nonetheless, the way it's presented can be kind of grim some days. So that was our idiom today. Born, but not born yesterday. I, I actually really like that expression. Maybe as I get older, it's because as I get older, I, I like to think I get wiser and I'm not as naive as I was when I was young. And I definitely grew up in a sheltered life and was pretty darn naive uh, when it, you know, when it came to life experiences and things. I grew up in small town America where we we were very sheltered. My sisters and I, we had a great great parents, you know, and so our experiences were different when we were younger. Now I've let the world knock me around a little bit and learned a lot along the way, but. One of those things was that I trusted people more on face value than I necessarily should have trusted them, and I've learned from that mistake. doesn't mean I still don't fall for people. My dad would always say before he passed away, I never, never met a con man I didn't like. And it's true. There are people that are very likable, but they're not always out with our best interest in mind. They're always out for their own best interest in mind, but not necessarily ours. And it's our personal responsibility to look out for ourselves, right? To, to keep our intuition, to keep our senses going so that we are able to discern whether people are wanting to help us or harm us because there's both types of people in the world. All right, that was our idiom for Supersize Business today. Our annual challenge today was about joyful calm, which I thought was interesting. Alfred Lord Tennyson said, there's no joy but calm. So meaning we're only joyful or we only feel joy when we're experiencing a sense of calm and I, I don't know if that's true or not I think you can be joyfully excited so that was our uh, our activity to get centered today was think of an 
experience or as you're going about your day, find joy, find calm in some joyful experience. What's a joyful, calm experience that you have today? So we're sharing that today. I, I guess I found joy just in my morning routine. I create systems and things and processes in my life that give me calm and comfort and joy. They, they make me feel better. When I follow my morning routines, I feel better than when it gets messed up or something happens to, to knock that out of alignment or out of, uh, or make it possible, impossible for, or not possible for me to follow my morning routine. You know, the morning that we had the storms and no electricity, I was not able to follow my, my normal morning routine. Did I still get all my stuff done during the day? Absolutely, because they're all things that are important to me, but they weren't done, certainly weren't done in the morning. <laughs> me still got this cough it's getting better and better though every day it gets a little bit better as do allergies and coughs and things like i said i don't have allergies so get up and go challenge today day 16 of our free 30 plus day challenge today was about financial options the o in our soap framework which is the framework that i share in the free get up and go challenge is Story. We talked about story yesterday with respect to finances, and then today we talked about options. Yesterday we storyboarded, and today our tool was PVM, I call it, but I learned it from Jim Edwards, who's an amazing man uh, that I met online and went to his very first event in Atlanta, Georgia, well over a decade ago. I don't even remember what else I was doing and where I was working at the time, but I remember I was still back in corporate America, and I went to, and I met and got involved with an amazing mastermind group out of that event and uh, the rest is history didn't really do much online personally I hate to admit it but for about a decade or so I didn't really do much of anything online it wasn't until 2017 when I actually had the opportunity to say hey what am I gonna do now with my life I just gotten divorced and we were separating assets and previous businesses that we'd run together and I had the opportunity to say okay well I'm old, I could retire, but I don't really want to because I think I have more to offer the world than to just, you know, fold up, travel around the world and, and just, you know, I guess experience life would have been kind of fun, but it wasn't the choice I wanted to make at the time. And, and I still wouldn't choose that, especially given all the craziness of COVID. Although I suspect that during COVID, it would have been a good time to travel around to exotic places that weren't very frequently visited because there were probably some incredible bargains to be found and nuances of travel and places to see that wouldn't be as touristy as a lot of travel tends to be. I'm not a touristy traveler. I don't, I don't want to go to all the big cities. To me, at some point, every big city feels and looks the same. They, have, they all have their own unique personalities and slight differences, but it, they all start to feel the same after a while. A big city is a big city. I want to see how people really live and who people really are not and that's that's not represented by our big cities as witnessed by our elections in the United States of America in 2020 all right an aside so get up and go today was about our financial options and the use of a power vision movie all of that was because of Jim Edwards teaching me about power vision movies power vision movie is when we put ourselves in the starring role in the movie and we imagine our transformation we go from where we are to where we want to be and we experience it in our mind visually using all of our senses and that helps us to identify possible ways and steps along the way to get from where we are to where we want to be and that helps us identify options that we will analyze tomorrow as part of the a in the soap framework where we'll analyze make a decision and then act on that decision all tomorrow so with respect to our finances so I actually did uh, the storm we just had a big storm here and a huge mess and the city has done such an incredible job of handling it and cleaning it up the uh, they hired contractors to deal with all the debris I live by a park now and they use that park as a staging ground for all the debris and all the brush and for weeks for like four weeks now people have been taking brush there and big tree stumps and tree sections and they finally had to stop letting people bring stumps because they didn't have any way to deal with them but in like uh, by Thursday they had the entire area cleaned up it was supposed to be two weeks but the contractors had it cleaned up all gone all chipped up and and uh, driven away and cleaned up uh, by Thursday so in four days great example to me of 
under promising and over delivering. They said two weeks and they got it done in four days. To me, that is over delivering and under promising. And I, I for, for one, absolutely, uh, totally appreciate it because all the grinding and, and sawing and truck hauling and beep, 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 beep was you know, a block away from where I currently reside. So it was pretty interesting. But I'm using that as my financial example for this time through the, the SOAP framework. So I think it's a good one. I think it's a good one that people can relate to because it reminds us that stuff comes up all the time in our lives that we didn't anticipate. We didn't anticipate that that storm was going to happen. It was going to damage the roof. It was going to take out the front porch. It was going to um, cause five dump trucks full of just two trees in the front yard. It was, uh, it was a huge big deal. And so we want to have in our toolbox and our, our level of confidence and capability that if something happens, we're going to figure out a way to handle it. And we can do that by using the SOAP framework. So that's that. I am going to go about and start my day. It is a weekend here in the USA, Saturday. And on Saturdays, I like to mix up my routine and do some different things. And so that's exactly what I'm going to do today. If you have a question about offline business, I've been in business for 48 years now, uh, both in my running my own businesses as well as a quarter century of that, simultaneously working in corporate America in some of the coolest capacities imaginable. I like to create my own role in organizations. And I, although I, I worked as a quality director and quality vice president, et cetera, and a quality manager starting up through quality, I picked quality because it allowed me to actually understand and stick my nose in the entire organization's working and framework and processes and procedures. And I, I did that intentionally because I wanted to understand from a big picture standpoint how everything relates and ties together and how those processes need to be linked and improved and how they are dependent on one another and they need to work together in order to grow and build and supersize a business. So, lots, lots there to draw upon. Anyway, my point with that is if you've got questions or concerns or you're stuck on something and you really don't feel like you know what to do, you've looked into it, you've tried to figure it out, but you're like torn between what to do next, hit me up. Ask me in the comments below. Ask me via a direct message and I guarantee you we can get you moving almost immediately, if not immediately, to the next thing that you need to do instead of feeling stuck or, or frozen. I know that when you especially when you first start out on your own, a lot of times, or when you do something new, you don't really have that network of people that you can ask that will support you and help move you forward. And so I wanna be that resource to people for as long as I can, right? I, I'll stop making this offer at the end of this video at some point, uh, but for right now, I've so far, I've always fit people in because it takes way less time to help people than you actually think. All right, have a great day, and I'll, of course, be with you tomorrow. Bye.